1990 in the Journal of Scientific Exploration, former astrophysicist and well-known UFO researcher Jacques Vallée presented five arguments against the extraterrestrial or ET theory. First, Vallée argued that there seemed to be far too many UFOs to be alien visitors. Based on the enormous volume of sightings, coupled with the many more that were probably not seen while people slept, he estimated 14 million UFOs had visited the Earth in the last 40 years. Why would any species travel light years to visit the Earth 14 million times and not attempt to land in the White House? Surely this species would have learned everything there is to learn about our world and have gotten bored by now. Second, he argued that alien sightings bore too close a resemblance to humans. It's easy to forget the human body has evolved to a narrow set of constraints. Had our planet been bigger, the change in gravity would have affected our shape. If the tilt of the Earth's axis had been 60 degrees instead of 23.5, the change in the Earth's seasons would have been too severe to allow the development of mankind. Our oxygen levels would likely not be suitable for an ET visitor. Even on Earth itself, the oxygen levels have changed over the last million years, so much that we would need a spacesuit to visit the dinosaurs. Yet alien visitors almost never wear spacesuits, according to eyewitnesses. Third, Jacques Follet didn't understand how there could be so many alien abduction reports. By some estimates, tens of thousands of people have claimed to be abducted by aliens. They regularly gather at conventions. Some even claim to be examined by medical instruments similar to our own. Yet despite their superior space travel abilities, these aliens are unable to master the art of anesthesia. Most alien abductees remember their medical procedures aboard the spacecraft better than a patient undergoing a surgery. Vallée's fourth argument addressed the history of UFO sightings. Vallée's research revealed that humans have been witnessing UFOs for hundreds if not thousands of years. In Roman times, witnesses saw flying shields. In the 19th century, the UFOs resembled Jules Verne airships. Abduction stories were also common in former times, yet instead of aliens, Europeans were abducted by trolls, gnomes, elves, fairy folk, leprechauns, and other miniature troublemakers. Fifthly, how is it that UFOs have such incredible propulsion? They move faster than airplanes, zip and zag, and even disappear and reappear. The objects can even merge with each other. Defenders of the ET theory argue this is simply an advanced spacecraft. For many years, that is exactly what I believed. What changed my mind was a scientific explanation that matched the evidence. Put simply, UFOs are balls of plasma of varying complexity with a variety of origins. There are many different types of plasma balls, but we'll talk about three different types. One of the most basic types of plasma balls is ball lightning. There are many theories as to what causes ball lightning. One theory is that when lightning hits the ground, it vaporizes various chemicals such as silica, the chemical or chemicals drift up into the sky and they become surrounded by electromagnetic plasma in the air. When the energy runs out, which is usually no more than 30 seconds, the lightning balls either disappear or explode. Like UFOs, they have been witnessed throughout history, though usually at much lower altitudes. Plasma balls have always fascinated humans, and Nikola Tesla even invented a device that could make them. The second type of plasma ball, called earth lights, is formed by underground quartz. Pressure on quartz crystal results in the rearrangement of molecules and generation of small amounts of plasma. During an earthquake or underground rupture, caves of quartz crystals generate balls of plasma that can rise to the surface. This theory was cogently explained in 2014 by NASA scientist Friedemann Freund in an article for National Geographic magazine. In 2009, residents in Ona, Italy reported mysterious lights before an earthquake struck the town. In other parts of the world, such earth lights can be seen regularly in Hestalen, Norway, and in Gurdon, Arkansas. In the 1980s, Paul Devereaux and a geologist demonstrated the correlation between UFO sightings in England with underground fault lines. The earth lights explanation for UFOs is even featured on an episode for Unsolved Mysteries. And piezoelectricity is a simple phenomenon where if you squeeze um, crystals such as quartz or Rochelle salt, you get an electric current out of them. Gurdon sits atop an abundant deposit of quartz crystals in an active fault line known as the New Madrid Fault. Michael Klingen believes that when the plates shift, an electric charge is released from the crystals and seen above ground as the Gurdon light. 
Another type of plasma balls is called dusty plasmas or crystal plasma. This form of plasma resides mostly in the upper atmosphere and lasts much longer than ball lightning or earth lights. Crystal plasma forms in ways that are not entirely understood. One theory is that the bulk of upper atmosphere plasma balls form when solar flares hit the Earth's atmosphere and interact with dust. In 2007, in the New Journal of Physics, a group of Russian and German scientists led by Vadim Tsitovich, a physicist at the Russian Academy of Science, argued that complex crystal plasma had an unusual set of properties that made it similar to living organic beings. The plasma was able to maintain itself by consuming energy and other plasmas guided by a DNA-like structure. These type of, quote, self-organized plasmas had memory, could reproduce, evolve, merge, and communicate with other plasmas, and had, quote, thermodynamic and evolutionary features thought to be peculiar only to living matter, end quote. In 2006, the UK government released their own explanation for UFOs, known as the Condine Report, which credited plasma balls as the source of the UFO phenomenon. Many of the scientists who worked in secret on the project are not mentioned, though the public works of UFO researcher Paul Devereaux and Canadian professor Michael Persinger are referenced throughout. The report detailed how plasma balls rapidly appear and disappear, flick and flitter, merge and split, and come in all shapes and sizes. They can be thought of as cosmic balloons that fill up with energy, the report argued, appearing and disappearing thanks to the self-regulation of their internal energy. They also can spread out so thin that they become undetectable. This, added to their buoyancy, gives plasma objects the ultimate and shape-shifting abilities. Their rapid speed should be no surprise either, since energy can travel 90% of the speed of light. Plasma bulls are, after all, balls of energy. Citing scientists not mentioned by name, the report detailed how the plasma balls have been observed to send out beams of light when attracted to nearby objects, not unlike Tesla's plasma globe. Their energy spots can also generate a multitude of lights that resemble porthole windows. The famous triangular formation witnessed by so many is really just a string of plasma balls in electrical alignment, the report argued. Often their density is so low that they take on an aluminum or reflective appearance, often in the familiar saucer shape. Many reports of UFOs describe them hovering near power lines or other high energy areas. This is likely because they are refueling themselves. The plasma balls also give off tremendous forms of energy, and it's no surprise electrical instruments often fail during UFO encounters. In 2015, Japanese researchers developed a method to create 3D holograms using plasma in the air in any shape. They called their invention, quote, fairy lights. Not only could you see these holograms, the technology was so advanced you could touch them. More recently, the U.S. Navy patented a plasma decoy to be released by an airplane in the event of a missile attack. In their device, the plasma was dense enough to fool an advanced missile. Some newspapers even called it a UFO decoy. But what about all those alien abductions? In 1990, Canadian psychology professor Michael Persinger and geologist John Durr published a paper arguing that alien abductions were hallucinations generated by the intense energy from plasma balls. To demonstrate his theory, they rotated a low-frequency magnetic field above the brains of subjects for 15 minutes and recorded the results. 65% of the subjects claimed they saw vivid images. 46% felt as if they had left their own body. 69% felt they were somewhere else. It all may sound hard to believe, but I myself underwent a similar experiment at the Brain Research Institute Center at UCLA. Within minutes of having an electromagnet placed over the left side of my head, I began to hallucinate. I soon felt that I was floating in the room. Then I underwent a series of electric shocks intended to measure the effects on my brain. Of course, I was aware of what was happening the entire time. Someone experiencing a powerful plasma ball would likely have a more severe reaction and would not have the necessary context. Now let's look at some famous examples of UFO encounters and see how the plasma explanation fits. In 2017, the Pentagon released three videos, Gimbal, Flyer One, and Go Fast. Considering that the objects move with enough g-force to kill any Earth-like animal inside, it's unlikely space aliens were inside these supposed craft. 
Remember that balls of plasma, however, can travel at 90% of the speed of light. According to the Condine report, the objects are also attracted to aircraft and are frequently caught on the aircraft's ambient electrical charge. Other Navy pilots have reported the object responding to radar and other microwaves coming off the aircraft. As an electromagnetic organism with lifelike capabilities, at least according to some scientists, these rays could be disturbing. They could also result in an electromagnetic counter response, regardless of whether the balls of plasma are sentient. An important feature of some of the claims made by U.S. Navy personnel is that objects have been spotted emerging and submerging in the ocean. Nothing prevents balls of plasma from traveling underwater. Since a major source of plasma may be underground earthquakes or other ruptures, we should also expect balls of plasma to emerge from the water as they do from the ground. Not only do they zip at incredible speeds, UFOs have been recorded flashing with triangles or cubes inside them. If we assume these types of geometric UFOs are formed by underground quartz as explained above, then it should not be surprising that it forms into a geometric shape. Examine any crystal under a microscope and you will see straight lines forming into beautiful shapes. The flashing element also demonstrates that it is a similar kind of plasma ball seen on a weekly basis in Hestal in Norway. Like most plasma balls, these objects are only seen for short periods of time. Much has been made of the story of a UFO that deactivated a nuclear missile at the Malmstrom Air Force Base in 1967. The story seems highly credible as military personnel put their reputations on the line in making the story public. Boeing engineers were mystified as to how the UFO, which was seen hovering over the base, deactivated an ICBM. Retired United States Air Force officials have compiled more than 120 reports of UFOs deactivating nuclear ICBMs. As mentioned above, UFO witnesses frequently notice the objects hovering near power lines. The scientist Vadim Zatovich also described how some complex plasma feeds off electricity and other plasmas to survive. Considering that highly enriched uranium is one of the most potent forms of energy on Earth, Perhaps UFOs are attracted to the objects the same way they are attracted to power lines. UFOs are known to cause electronics to fail. Perhaps the nuclear arsenal of the United States is not as protected as some engineers think it to be. In 1989, Voronezh, in the Soviet Union, a few dozen children and adults witnessed a glowing sphere land in a park. Then a hatch opened at the bottom of the sphere. Out stepped a 10-foot tall alien with three eyes that was only three inches thick. Alongside the alien was a robot reminiscent of the sci-fi TV show Lost in Space. As the crowd watched, the two beings circled the park. They stopped in front of a 16-year-old who they attempted to abduct. The teenager resisted. The being suddenly disappeared. Five minutes later, they reappeared. This time, the alien held a giant rifle-like tube. It aimed the tube at the teenager, and he instantly disappeared. The beings then re-entered the craft and took off amid screams and shouts of the terrified witnesses. Just as the spaceship vanished in the sky, the missing teenager instantly reappeared. Authorities then separated and interviewed the witnesses. Some saw nothing at all from their angle. Many others, especially the children, however, were consistent in seeing a tall, thin being and a robot. Investigators also found burn marks on the ground and elevated levels of the radioactive element cesium. It's tempting to dismiss the eyewitness account as an hallucination caused by the powerful energy emitted from the plasma ball. There is another possible explanation, however. Just as plasma can form into shapes from radio waves, it may be possible that the low frequency waves or biophotons coming from our minds is somehow impacting the plasma. In the case of Ronej, the beings were only three inches thick and only crudely resembled aliens. Strange as it is, Many alien sightings report objects that are nearly two-dimensional, only visible from certain angles. Such theory was originally presented by Paul Devereaux in his book Earthlights. A remarkable feat by Marcel Fogel may give some support for Devereaux's theory. An expert on crystal formation, Fogel worked for many years as a scientist at IBM and held over 30 patents. One day in his lab, Vogel meditated on forming liquid crystals while looking at a painting of the Virgin Mary. The result is remarkable. It's unclear, however, what mechanism caused the crystals to form the way they did. Similar to Marcel Vogel, Stanford professor William Teller has performed experiments demonstrating the mind's ability to subtly influence the physical surroundings, such as the pH level of water. Both UFOs and plasma are fascinating to observers, and though much is understood about them, there is far more that we don't understand.